Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah and this is Cooper. If this is the very first video of mine that you're seeing, I have two cats and they make lots of appearances in my video. This one just happens to be very early. Oh, and there he goes. Easy come, easy go. <laughs> I was sitting here petting him for several minutes. Now I have like cat hair stuck to my lip gloss. I'm also like slightly allergic to cats too. Sometimes when they come in and out of frame, there's different cuts in the video. And so like one section will have the cat. And then the next section, if you look really closely, you'll see me developing hives on my chest and neck. It's awesome, super fun. Anyway, that's not why you're here. You're here to see another MLM Top Fails video. And that is exactly what I have for you today. These are compilation style videos of things that MLM reps will post on social media. That could be TikToks, live streams, Instagram photos, Instagram stories, Facebook posts, anything goes really. And so my viewers will see these things on social media. They'll screen record them or screenshot them and then they'll send them to me for me to consider for a video. And what I do when I'm preparing for these topics top fails videos as I go through my Google Drive and I pick out the best of the best that has been sent my way. So if you do come across something on social media that you think would be a good fit, the instructions for how to send that to me are down below and I thank you in advance. But before we get into these top fails, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Factor. Factor makes meeting your nutrition goals easier than ever by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Factor meals arrive pre-prepared and ready to eat in two minutes, which is perfect for busy lifestyles. You can choose from chef's choice, keto, calorie smart, veggie, and vegan options, so there's something for everyone. And the meal plans range from 6 to 18 meals per week, plus you can easily skip a week if you want to. It's really customizable to fit your needs. Do you know what time I'm filming this video right now? 9 p.m. because life is so hectic and so busy with a new baby that pretty much nothing gets done until after she's in bed for the night. And sometimes, unfortunately, that includes eating. I can't even begin to count the number of times that I'm looking at the clock and whoops, it's almost dinner time and I forgot to eat lunch and I have no idea what we're doing for dinner. So Factor comes in to save the day. It's like having meal prep delivered to your house to have on hand for those times where you're in a time crunch. They're balanced, they're delicious, they're convenient. You really can't go wrong. I got some really great meals this week, including roasted veggie and pesto tortellini, jalapeno lime cheddar chicken, and a spicy poblano beef bowl. I love that there's so much variety. It's kind of fun going to the fridge to pick out what delicious meal I get to eat, but didn't have to prepare. You may recall that I've also worked with HelloFresh in the past, and Factor is now owned by HelloFresh. And I love both services for different reasons. HelloFresh is perfect for those quick meals that you want to cook from home, but Factor takes that convenience one step further, and they deliver it to you already made. No cooking involved. You just heat it up in a enjoy. And this time saver is absolutely key for me these days. If you would like to give Factor a try, you can head to factor75.com and use my code HannahAlonzo50 at checkout. This is going to give you 50% off your first box. Again, that's code HannahAlonzo50 at factor75.com for 50% off your first box. Thanks again, Factor, for your support of the channel. Now I've got some good top fails for you today. First up is a Facebook live video from the top earner in the MLM company, Plexus. And she went live on Amazon Prime Day to try to convince people to stop spending their money on Prime Day deals and use that money to join her Plexus team instead. I'll be honest, this video is a little bit on the longer side and it's also kind of insufferable. So I'm gonna speed it up to get us through it a little bit quicker. So here's the deal. Like one of the things that I like to talk about is being a business for yourself and being an entrepreneur. And um, you know, if you open a brick and mortar business, and you have employees and overhead and bills and rent and all the things, $100,000 to start that business, franchise, whatever you're doing. And for my business, it cost me 100 bucks to get started. And that was including my supplements that I started on when I started. What better deal on Prime Day than to get deeply, deeply discounted, cheaper than I can even buy them products with your first order and a business for 100 to $200, depending on what products you choose. You get a website, a replicated site, a referral link, if you will. You get all your product. You will have success if you take them. <laughs> and you get all kinds of training with an app that we have that has everything you need to start your business. And you get access to me. And I'm the top earner in the company. Crazy, I know. If I can do this, anyone can do this. Ugh, I feel so creeped out by the way she said, you can get access to me, the top earner in the company. Yuck. I know you feel all high and mighty because you make more money than literally anyone else in the pyramid, but have a slice of humble pie, lady. She's using it as a selling point, like spend a hundred to two hundred dollars on Plexus and you'll get access to me. Gross. Maybe she means it like I'm the most successful, so I'll teach you all my tricks. But here's the trick. She got into Plexus 
taxes 10 years ago, a decade ago, when the company was only four years old at that point. Does being in Plexus for 10 years sound fun to you? Does that sound like something you wanna do? No, probably not. And regardless of the amount of time that passes, it's not really about how much time you spend in the company, it's about how big you're able to grow your downline. So do you really think you're gonna be able to grow your downline as big as the top earner in the company? Not a chance. So therefore, her income level is unattainable for you. And there is nothing that she could teach you that would make you as successful. So what if your story started on prime day and instead of getting a air fryer really cheap, I don't have an air fryer, but I hear they're awesome. What if instead of buying an air fryer really cheap on prime day, your story started with it was prime day. I decided to invest in my health and buy a franchise and products for under $100. A second ago, you said it was $100 to join. Then you said it was $100 to $200. And now you're saying it's under $100. So which one is it? And it's not a quote, franchise and products that you're paying for. You are not purchasing a Plexus franchise when you sign up. You're signing up to become a salesperson, dear Lord. If you were opening a franchise, there would be restrictions on how many Plexus reps could be within a geographical area. For example, you would not have 100 Burger Kings in the same city, that would be dumb, that would be market saturation. There's no way that all those Burger Kings would make good business. And I mean, the same goes for MLMs too. The more salespeople there are, the worse the business opportunity is. However, the compensation plan is designed to oversaturate the market. There's not a limit on how many people can join. In fact, the more people, the better for the people at the top. And if you're wondering what the source of all that meowing is in the background, it's Zeke. We saw Cooper earlier. He's the quiet, cuddly one. This is Zeke. He's the maniac. We're getting both cats in one video. This hasn't happened in a long time, actually. He'll leave and quiet down eventually. We just have to give in and give him the attention first. The only people that don't have success in network marketing are the people that quit. Like we get a bad stigma because people start and stop when they don't have success. And it's easy to quit your business when it costs you basically $10 to join, right? You don't have a lot of skin in the game. Whereas if you had a brick and mortar business and you had employees and you had to pay rent, you would continue to work, work, work to have that success, right? But people start with Plexus, network marketing, and they don't have the business success as quickly as they want or they don't use their products like they're supposed to and they don't have success. Promise you our business and our products work if you work it and if you take it, period. The only people that fail are people that quit. It's just a fact. Hey, did you know that if you're not making money in an MLM, it's because you're a failure and a quitter? Victim blaming exhibit A. Shaming people for quitting the MLM because she's salty about it, because that hurts her income. That's what this all comes down to. I have a personal inside source, we can call her, who gave me some information about this top earner. I'll put the screenshot of our conversation over here, but when I asked her about this top earner specifically, she said she went diamond in six months and double diamond in a year and a half. She's a pageant queen in Texas and signed up everyone fast. She makes about $300,000 a month. Her daughter has tried to do the business since she turned 18, but hasn't hit anything significant yet. She has no room to talk about failure, meaning that she's had zero failure and zero hardship in the business since she started. She hasn't worked for five plus years and she lives on her levels, meaning she lives on the income she's making from her downline. I can tell you that this information is coming from a very reliable source. You may notice that this is a text string, an iMessage string between me and this person. She's not just a random person who DM'd me on Instagram, let's say that. So from the sounds of it, it seems like she got in super early, recruited a ton of people, and now she's living the high life off of other people's efforts. And to top it all off, her daughter isn't even successful in the business. So what does that tell you about her ability to help people in her downline make good money from Plexus? You may remember earlier, she said, you get access to me, the top earner in the company. And she said it in a way of like, you want to be on my team because I can train you the best or something like that. But if her own daughter has been doing it for a while and hasn't even hit significant ranks herself yet, then that kind of tells you everything you need to know that it's not about tips and tricks and training. And rather it's more about timing and recruitment volume. She is making an ungodly amount of money for doing basically nothing, it seems. And that's exactly how the scheme is designed to work for these people people at the tippy tippy top. So easy for her to say how easy it is to make money in the business and that it just works if you work it. If I hear that phrase one more time, I think I might perish. You have success, your friends want what you have. 
and your story on Prime Day next year, you could be having an amazing business <laughs> for under $100, including your product. Yeah, I'm all about small business. And guess what, guys? I don't work for anyone. I am a small business. Wrap your brain around that. Instead of hating on people, selling stuff on the internet, how about being so proud of them that their moms, that there's that their dads, that they're people that like want multiple streams of income because they want better for their family. Most of us, while raising babies and businesses, instead of hating on them, what if if you needed something, you put on your Facebook, who sells toothpaste? I order toothpaste from someone that's a network marketer. I use toothpaste every day. Why would I not support my friend? Probiotics. Watched seven commercials for probiotics yesterday when I was getting my nails done. Super basic, white, I'm boring. Seven commercials on the television. I don't really watch TV, but it was on with subtitles while I was getting my nails done for probiotics from big box retailers. What if you're like, oh, now the world understands the value of gut health. My girl Celeste Gwen sells the best probiotics out there at the best price. I'm going to order from her because she is a small business. <laughs> and when you order from me, you have the option to get your own referral code and then get your products paid for. Like it blows my mind that people would rather go to Walmart to buy a probiotic or a multivitamin than order from their friend that is trying to be a mom, be a dad, have another career, but have a multiple stream of income. It blows my mind that people are tacky and ugly about people using social media to build a business. I mean, <laughs> what in the world? I found a way to have a multi-million dollar business while being at home with my kids from this phone that you're watching this on right now. So. What if every time you needed something, you put on Facebook, who sells X, Y, or Z? Why would you not rather give your money to your friends than go to Walmart or Target? God forbid, don't go to Target. But why would you not rather support your friends? So you're not a small business though. You're a salesperson and a recruiter for a very large company. The name is literally Plexus Worldwide. They operate in multiple countries. At surface level, if you buy a product from your friend's MLM, it seems like you're supporting them personally. But what you're also inadvertently doing is supporting the predatory business model that is ultimately victimizing them. They do get a small commission, that's true, but you're also buying that product from an MLM company company and MLMs, as we know, are problematic for like a million and a half reasons. Is that the kind of company you want your money to go to? The company that operates based on a ridiculously convoluted compensation plan that's making people like her at the top rich, likely at the expense of your friend? That's how I see it. When you're buying a product from your friend that's in an MLM company, you might be helping or supporting them right now in the form of a 15% commission, a few dollars basically, but you are also supporting a business model that's ultimately going to hurt them in the future. It's not supporting a small business, no matter how you slice it. Soapbox, I'm off of it now. But what if on Prime Day, instead of buying an air fryer or a pressure cooker or a Roomba or a shirt that you're going to throw away next week that you got for $9.99 and it doesn't wash up well, what if instead of doing that, you got on my replicated site, my referral code, and you ordered products that are going to help you feel better, get your gut healthy, sleep better, give you better energy, help your skin. Y'all, 46 years old, our products work. I've been taking them for 11 years because I was the super stubborn girl that watched my best friend for a year before I finally joined her. I was a customer, I didn't want anything to do with the business because of the stigma I attached personally to network marketing because of people doing it ick, slimy, shady, cliche. I love that I've been able to do network marketing and keep my integrity intact. People come to me if they want what I have because they can't get it anywhere else. The stigma attached to MLMs is that they're slimy and shady and gross because of videos exactly like this one. She said that she's been able to quote, keep her integrity intact while being in network marketing, but it's lectures like this that give it a bad rap. If all of your customers just supposedly flock to you, then why are you filming yourself working so hard to convince people to join? This is what's so slimy and gross about MLMs. The blaming, the shaming, the creative of sales pitches, the daily social media posts shoving it down your throat. This is what people don't like. I mean, her integrity is shattered into pieces as far as I'm concerned. So what if on Prime Day, instead of ordering a tchotchke that you're gonna throw away later or give to Goodwill in a few years, you ordered product, got your replicated site, reached out to a few friends, hey, let's do this together. 
I know this girl, she's a hot mess. She's the top earner in the company. If she can do it, we can do it. It's me. I'm a hot mess. And you started your health and wellness journey on Prime Day. And this time next year, you felt better. You looked better. You're sleeping better. You had more money. You had more energy. And you're like, man, I'm really glad that Celeste Gwen posted about Plexus every day for 10 years. So Prime Day, cool. Buy some junk. Buy something you might need that you don't really need. Do we really need anything? If you're in America, you probably have all your basic needs met. But something that could actually change your family's life. Alrighty then, that's enough of that. I've seen what I needed to see. The video is only halfway over and I'm gonna do you a solid and not subject you to that. She basically just continues to repeat herself over and over and over again about why you should not buy things from Prime Day and instead join her business, okay? And eventually she encourages you to reach out to her or to visit her website so that you can sign up under her. Here's what's baffling to me about this. Imagine trying to tell people how they should spend their money. You don't really need anything. You don't need an air fryer or a t-shirt. That's all junk. Don't waste your money. Quite frankly, ma'am, how people spend their hard-earned money is none of your business. And in my opinion, it is so classless for her to be saying, you need my business opportunity. You need to join my downline more than whatever it is you're going to buy on Prime Day. She obviously would not be doing this live stream if it didn't benefit her financially in some way. So that tells you all you need to know. Here is your reminder, not that you need it, that you are free to spend your money how however you'd like, but I would advise you to not throw it away into a money pit like an MLM business opportunity. Up next is a video that was posted to TikTok and just for dramatic effect, I'm not gonna preface it with anything. I just need you to watch this in real time with me. The person who sent it to me gave me a little information on what this is about and just based on her one sentence description of this video, I already know it's about to be heinous. So yesterday, I started training at a part-time job, got to know all my fellow employees, and we're, you know, joking around with friends as we had our lunch and in the break room. This one guy was eating his meal at the same table as me. Sometime after that break, that same coworker who I was sharing lunch time with had a cardiac event. And they called 911, the paramedics came. We were all asking our supervisors today, how was he? And our supervisor had to regretfully tell us he didn't make it, that he didn't survive his cardiac event. I'd only known him for five hours and he was gone. I'm still trying to process my thoughts about it. Today while I was training, I was feet away from where it'll happen. But this whole event just impressed upon me more how much I value being a part of Primerica and helping families find coverage and protection for when the unthinkable happens, because you never know how much time you have. Now, I don't know if my fellow coworker was had coverage or not, or if his family's gonna have to scare up a GoFundMe or whatever, but I do wanna impress upon you that can watch this. Don't wait. You're never younger or healthier than you are today, probably. Don't let the fear of the cost of getting life insurance stop you from the call. I mean, it costs you nothing to schedule some conversation with me, nothing at all. And we can find you something that gets you protected and provides for your family if, if the worst should happen. So that they're at least not having to worry about the expense of all that and the debt and the loss of income. So, you never know how much time you have. I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to wrap my mind around what happened this past couple of days and asking you, reach out to me. See what we can do to you, do to help you. Uh-huh. 
using someone's death to peddle your MLM. We hate to see it. And the drama, the furrowed brow, the somber music in the background, the exhales, the slow, dramatic storytelling. Like if you're trying to manipulate people's emotions for the sake of your sales pitch, just say that my dude. This is in such poor taste. I am cringing so hard at it. This poor person was a complete stranger who passed away in a very sudden and unexpected way and your first thought is to get home and set up your tripod to film yourself using that person's death to pitch your MLM, that is foul. That's what always gets me about the things that MLM reps post on social media. This video had to pass through multiple mental screening checkpoints on his part before it wound up on the internet for everyone to see. First, he had to come up with the idea to connect someone's death to a sales pitch. Then he had to think about what to say and how to phrase it. Then he had to go through the act of filming it. Then he had to watch it back and add captions to it. And still, after all of that, he still thought to himself, yep, this is appropriate and clicked post. That's wild, dude. He had like five solid opportunities to reconsider his choice in making this video and he still did it anyway. Some people's moral compass is so far off track it is nearly unfathomable. But in these moments, I have to remind myself that being in an MLM company is a massive contributing factor for this kind of whack behavior. Being in an MLM makes you do things you would not otherwise do. That's what I believe. Because you get blinded by the earning potential and you don't think clearly about the situation when there's money involved. You start to view the world in terms of dollar signs and sales pitches. So knowing that, it does kind of make sense that he would take someone's tragedy and turn it into a sales pitch. It's like your brain is rewired to start thinking that way. Do you really think if he wasn't in Primerica that he would have posted this video? Look, I get it. Death, it's imminent for all of us. We have no idea when it's going to happen and that's terrifying and it is a good plan to have life insurance. But I think it would be very unlikely for just any old person to make a video like this about a stranger's death to remind us that we need to get life insurance unless you're the one who wants to sell the life insurance. And he makes it crystal clear that he wants to sell us something because he literally says that it's free to schedule a call with him. And he ends his video by saying, reach out to me so I can help set you up. Trying to profit off of somebody else's death, that's bad karma. Don't be like this person, okay? Promise me, promise me. I beg of you. Next is an explanation from a Monate rep as to why her MLM is better than affiliate marketing. And just as a refresher, affiliate marketing is when you apply to an affiliate program of some kind. Like to know it is one popular program. Amazon affiliates is another one. And with these programs, you get access to commissionable links. For example, I'm a part of the Amazon affiliate program. So I have the ability to get a commissionable link for anything on the Amazon platform, which means that if I'm sending somebody the link and they buy that product, then I'm I'm gonna get a cut of that sale, a commission from it. That is affiliate marketing. You're not partnering with any specific company. There's no recruiting. There isn't really any overhead cost. None of that. You simply get a commission when somebody uses your link. But her argument is that being in an MLM, Monate specifically, has higher earning potential for you than if you were to do affiliate marketing using commissionable links outside of an MLM. This is why I prefer network marketing over affiliate marketing. So I pulled up a hair care system on Like to Know It. You get 11% commission on a $135 system, that's going to come out to $15 per sale. Let's say four people click on your link and buy, that's going to be $60. Here is a system from Monate. The system's $161. We get 15% on that, which is $24 per sale. Let's say we do that four times, that's $96, but then we get an additional $60 bonus. So you're getting $156 versus $60. Now here's another really important factor to keep in mind when someone goes to repurchase, do you really think they're going to go back to the original like to know it link? No, they're probably just going to repurchase from the brand's site. And so you're not going to get commission on any future orders. But with network marketing and money specifically, anytime someone logs back into their account to purchase, that is tied to your account. So this becomes residual income that's sustainable. She makes a really interesting point. I'll give that to her. She is correct that if you recommend somebody a consumable product using an affiliate link, consumable meaning that you purchase it, you use it all up and you're going to have to buy it again, like shampoo, then those customers are very unlikely to repurchase under your original link. That's very true. If an influencer recommends a shampoo and you try it and you love it, you're probably not going to go through the hassle of like messaging them to get the link again or digging for it yourself somewhere. So she does kind of have a good argument.
argument there as to why Monet could make you more money in that regard. But here's where it crumbles is that not every affiliate link is for a consumable product. What you're recommending with an affiliate link could be clothing, a kitchen appliance, like an air fryer that the last lady was getting so heated about, an organizational tool, a toy, whatever. And those are all things that you're likely only gonna be purchasing once anyway. So in that case, her point is kind of irrelevant. Secondly, we have to run some kind of cost benefit analysis of the situation and consider how much time and money is it gonna take me to make sales using Monate versus making sales using affiliate links not associated at all with an MLM. Let's think about an MLM. If you wanna go that route, you first have to buy a starter kit, so you have to invest some money up front. And most MLMs do sell consumable products, so you're gonna have to be repurchasing these things every so often too. And then it's likely gonna take you a ton of time to actually sell the product. You're gonna have to be promoting them constantly and making content about them for social media. You might be cold messaging people asking if they're interested. Likely there are all kinds of Zoom call trainings that you're gonna be expected to attend. And MLM products are a very hard sell. They're expensive and they have a bad reputation. So it's likely gonna take you a lot of time and effort and energy to secure even one sale one time. Finding a buyer who is willing to pay $161 for a hair care system from an MLM company with hair loss lawsuits? Probably not gonna be that easy, I would imagine. And so in order for me to break this down a little further with the hard numbers, I wanna show you my Amazon affiliate earnings. I went back and forth on whether or not I was gonna do this because honestly, I feel like showcasing how much money you're making is kind of tacky. However, you know that I like to break things down in a factual and numerical way. And so I think that for the purpose of the example, I'm gonna do it. Here's how I go about Amazon affiliate links, okay? Occasionally, if I really love a product and I think other people would find it valuable and it would improve their lives in some way, I'll post about it on my Instagram story with a little anecdote about why I love it and why I think you would love it. And then I'll just put the affiliate link. There's no pressure. I'm not forcing it on you. If you're not interested, you just click to the next slide, you move on, it's fine, no harm, no foul. It doesn't really matter that much. Point being, it doesn't take that much time out of my life. Oh my God, she's awake. So here's my top selling items from the last 90 days that I've recommended on my Instagram stories. I recommended a one line a day journal that I love. I've had my own for over four years now and it's incredible. I love it. I think everyone should have one. I was writing in it one night and I was like, you know what? Other people might like this. I snapped a picture, I posted it. That made me $30. These appliance cord organizers that I have on all of my kitchen appliances, that made me $10. This spray that keeps my cats from destroying my furniture, $9. A low profile walking treadmill that I use inside during the summer when it's too miserable to go for walks outside. That was $53. And a spinning scrubber brush that is the ultimate cleaning tool for my tile shower. That was $32. In total, those top five products made me $135 within the past 90 days using Amazon affiliate. And I think that's awesome considering it took me collectively probably 10 minutes to post about all of those things. And those recommendations came about organically. I was using my shower scrubber and I was like, this is the best tool ever. Everyone needs to know about it. Or this super super cheap pheromone spray protects my furniture from my cats and their knife hands. They're all things that I genuinely love and I genuinely recommended and I posted about it and I didn't think about it again. So $135 over the course of 90 days is not particularly impressive, but when you consider that took maybe 10 minutes of my life, then $135 for 10 minutes of work is pretty sweet. Now, conversely, think about how much time it would take you to make $135 in commissions from Monate. How many social media posts do you have to make? How many people do you have to cold message? How many people do you have to follow up with? How many Zoom calls are you spending your time on? If Monate reps make a 15% commission on their sales, that means that they're gonna have to sell $900 worth of product. I imagine that it's gonna take them a lot longer than 10 minutes to sell $900 worth of shampoo. Cause like we already talked about, Monate is a really hard sell. It's going to take a lot of effort and time and convincing to get someone to agree to buy it. And last I feel like using affiliate links is a lot more natural in general. Because think about it, my entire Instagram account is not dedicated to being an Amazon affiliate girly. 99% of what I post has nothing to do with affiliate links and I'm not trying to sell you something. But 1% of the time, I want to recommend something that I really think is going to add value to someone's life. It might be helpful or convenient for them. And I'm personally really conscious about limiting the number of affiliate links I share because I don't want people to feel like I'm trying to sell them something at every turn. 
with the hope being that my audience would be more receptive and trusting of my recommendations. And that in turn might make it easier to make money through affiliate links because you've built that trust with people and they know that when you're recommending them something, it's honest and it's real. Whereas if you're a Monate girly and every single thing you post on social media is tied to the company or the products, your followers might start to feel used or frustrated or desensitized to your pitches. And that's definitely not what you want if you're trying to make money and earn a commission. <laughs> I mean, I've followed people from my personal life who are in an MLM and it's like, oh, they're so-and-so pitching such and such again. And it's almost like you train yourself to just scroll past it, as sad as that is. So in a sense, now all that time that you're spending creating that content to pitch your products is going to waste because no one wants to be pitched every time they see your posts and you run the risk of them just simply ignoring it. So in conclusion, I think there are many reasons to assume that affiliate marketing does have higher earning potential than being in an MLM. And again, I hope that me showing my earnings was okay. I hope it didn't come off wrong. Please know that the intent was not to flaunt anything or brag about anything. I just know that's the way I like to receive information with cold hard facts and numbers if possible. So that's the way I wanna give the information. Making money from an MLM is not very efficient or practical. Next, this is kind of funny. This this might be the first time I've ever featured a company's own compensation plan as the top fail itself, but somebody sent me a screenshot of the Isogenics comp plan that blatantly confirms that they're operating as a pyramid scheme. As a refresher, one of the ways that FTC classifies a pyramid scheme is that the emphasis is more so on recruiting new distributors as the real way to make money. If the compensation plan rewards you better for recruitment activities than it does for sales activities, that is an indication of a scheme. So here's a screenshot of one of the pages of the Isogenics compensation plan. I'll have the full document linked below and it's showing a pyramid like structure, which is not uncommon. Lots of compensation plans have this, but if we look closer at this box off to the side, it says number one thing to remember, the real power of the compensation plan comes from building a team of associates selling Isogenics products. Your goal should be to identify, train and support others in sharing the products with as many customers as possible. It literally says, that the way to make the most money is to recruit. It does not get more black and white than this. I don't know that I've ever seen a compensation plan explicitly state it like that. As we know, that's just how MLMs operate. It's not surprising in the least, but typically you have to come to that realization on your own that recruitment is where the higher earning potential is. You kind of have to dissect and really understand the compensation plan itself to discover that it's not really about selling the products. But Isogenics does us a favor by literally stating the fact that indicates they're operating as a pyramid scheme because recruitment is the main goal. The real power of the compensation plan comes from building a team of associates. There is no question about it. And I feel like if Isogenics ever was investigated for being an illegal pyramid scheme, this could definitely be used against them and they've kind of screwed themselves. I don't think this would work in their favor in court. Yikes, a huge fail for sure. And speaking of things holding up in court, here's a post that was recently made on the legal advice subreddit. It says puppy contract requires MLM dog food. I was recently reviewing the contract for a puppy we will be purchasing in two weeks. And I noticed something I would consider a little odd. The contract slash health guarantee basically states that the puppy should only ever be fed paw tree brand pet food. And if not fed paw tree, the health guarantee is void. I did a little extra research and paw tree is basically a pet food MLM. I'm not interested in feeding it to my dog. So I'm wondering if this contract is actually potentially enforceable. I don't predict any issues as we've used this breeder in the past and our current dog from her is very healthy, but the newly added line in her puppy contract health guarantee gave me pause. Now I'm certainly not in any position to be answering the legal question at hand here. My assumption would be that if you do sign a contract with the puppy food clause, then that contract would be legally enforceable. You read it, you signed it, therefore you're indicating that you agree to it. That's kind of how contracts work, right? But what I can can speak to is the MLM sales tactic piece of it. Because knowing what I know about how desperate MLM reps are for sales commissions, I'm feeling pretty confident about the fact that this dog breeder is likely a rep for Paw Tree and that they're only including this clause in the contract because they want to be the one to sell the dog food to the new owners. Oh, you know what? The health guarantee, yeah, that's void unless they're fed this one specific brand of dog food. And guess what? I just so happen to be a salesperson for said very specific brand of dog food. How convenient, I'll just sell it to you. So not
not only are they making money selling the puppies themselves, but now they're also squeezing more money out of these owners by trying to trap them into buying paw tree from them until the end of time. That's how I'm interpreting this situation at least, especially because of this piece at the end where they say this is the second puppy they've gotten from this breeder and this health guarantee clause is new to the contract since the first puppy. This tells me that this breeder has not always required people to use paw tree brand food, but now they do because they've joined a dog food MLM and it financially benefits them. So they're backing their buyers into a corner. I think it's so gross for a dog breeder to do that. I don't know pretty much anything about dog breeding, but I was looking up what a health guarantee is in this context. And I found out that this basically just means the breeder is guaranteeing at the time of sale that the puppy is free of any health conditions and that they're up to date on their shots. But I guess that sometimes the contracts will also state that should the puppy develop any kind of health conditions within a certain amount of time, or if they need vet visits, then the breeder is going to reimburse the owner for those costs. I have no way of knowing if this particular contract had something like that, but if it did, and they're saying that the puppy must be fed paw tree or else they're not going to cover any health related costs or vet visits, I think that's messed up because you're basically forcing the new owner to buy paw tree from you if they want to be protected under your health guarantee. In my opinion, this feels like a very unethical way to threaten people into buying from your MLM to line your own pockets. This reeks of desperation. And with that, that's all the top fails I have for you for this video today. Thanks to everyone who sent me the content for today's video. And again, if you come across something on social media that you want me to take a look at, the instructions for how to send that my way are in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon. Okay.